Hey guys, welcome back. So now with getting into the Immortal She-Hulk one shot to where it's here where we're given a bit deeper of a look into the immortality of the different Hulks and why the leader was one of the few to make it past the end of the multiverse. So let's get into it. But first, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to catch spills every week. And don't forget to hit that bell up top so we can squat up in the comments for the first hour. All right, so prior to this point with us getting the introduction of the Green Door in Avengers No Surrender, which then took the hype and the curiosity through the roof going into the Immortal Hulk. But with us learning about the Green Door and its connection to Gamma Science, which within Gamma Science, it always had that variable, which couldn't be calculated or predicted. And that variable was then discovered by Brian Banner to be the one below all. And that concept took us to the below place, which then introduced us to the concept that when all hoaxes die, they go through the green door to the below place. And then eventually the green door would open back up for them to where they can pass back through and enter the land of the living. And now with the immortal She-Hulk, we see how this rule applies to Jennifer Walters. And starting with her origin, which we had seen in Savage She-Hulk issue one back in 1979, when she was defending someone who was framed for the murder of crime boss Nicholas Trask's bodyguard, who she knew was innocent, but she couldn't prove that Trask had set it up. And at the time, she nearly got Trask convicted by planting evidence which pointed back to him, which then led Trask to send one of his goons after her, who had then shot her in the back. And back at the time, back in 79, Bruce was able to save her by intentionally staying calm so he wouldn't hulk out, and then quickly do a blood transfusion with his gamma radiated blood because there just wasn't enough time. Like it was either that or she was gonna die anyway. And continuing through Savage She Hulk, like when Bruce had did this, Jennifer had blacked out for some time before waking up in the hospital, but it's during that time that she had blacked out. This is where Al Ewing gives us the explanation of her first death, which was also her first time through the green door and her first time in the place below all, to where then she first met the one below all. And much like the other Hulk connected characters that we've seen, who have some form of connection with gamma radiation, and much like them when she died and came here, when she came back she had no recollection of the event. And like I've talked about before on the Immortal Hulk playlist, that was kind of one of Al Ewing's ways of retconning this idea and giving us a reason to why no one mentioned this prior to Avengers No Surrender. And later, our knowledge of the Green Door would come through Brian Banner, through Sasquatch, Bruce Banner visiting the below place himself, but also the story of Doc Samson through Secret Wars 2 and the Immortal Hulk. But then fast forward to current day when Jennifer is facing a mutant named Tantrum who has the powers to take people's fears and turn it into strength which made him a lot stronger during the course of Empire with the Kotati invasion. But that fight was very short because Wolverine then stabbed dude in the back. And Jennifer was like, whoa, you just killed this dude. But Wolverine was like, ah, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? And you know, Krakoa, we bring mutants back to life. Like we got this whole resurrection thing that works most of the time. But essentially Logan explains to Jennifer here that he's taking Tantrum back to Krakoa so he can be tried as a mutant. Because no matter how bad mutants are, they have a place amongst their own in Krakoa. And it's there where he can be on trial as a mutant rather than a mutant being tried by human laws to where in that case, they're always seen as a weapon. And it's here where Jennifer makes the mention, it's nice for some, which I feel like for her plays into a couple things because for one, when she had recently made her transition from her Grey Hulk back to your Green Hulk, this was done with her going through this trippy intervention with the help of Flo Mayers, which helped her overcome some huge insecurities like being killed by Thanos in Civil War II, but then also the deeper scars of her cousin Bruce staging his own suicide, which was also in Civil War II. But with her doing this and also confronting a version of Bruce subconsciously, it has showed us how the loss of Bruce affected her even physically, especially with her and Bruce being much closer years ago. But in addition to that, like with her comment, nice for some, with pertaining to the mutants of Krakoa, Jennifer still has a level of understanding to how mutants are mistreated, being that recently with her firm, she was defending a mutant to whom her law firm wanted her to drop because the the company didn't want to come off as mutant sympathizers, so Jennifer then quit the firm in order to continue her practice on her own. But around this time in the conversation with Wolverine, he mainly lets her know that doing more for mutants is not taking away from her, pertaining to her comment, nice for some. But after talking about this topic of Kokoa and the resurrections, Jennifer then tells Logan that she wants to continue this conversation, perhaps over a couple beers and in her human form so she can use complete sentences. So then Wolverine breaks into an abandoned bar, says he got the keys but he forgot them. Okay. But it's here where Jennifer asks Logan, what was it like? And more specifically, what is the process like dying and coming back to life? And practically, Wolverine just kind of brushes it off like he tells her there's things that you don't want to know. But all in all, Wolverine, he done seen so many versions of hell with docking, death of Wolverine, him in hell, and whatever death looks like in between Krakoan Resurrections. And not to mention the story his new daughter must have told him about the life and times of her father, which was him, 
in an alternate timeline. So essentially Wolverine is like, hey, just chuck it up to the healing factor, keep it simple and keep it moving. Because if you really try to figure it all out, all that's gonna do is bring you to a really dark place. And so now in the case of Jennifer, she continues to try to figure it all out, of course. But this time in her recollection, going back to Civil War II, she's then thinking about one of the last things she had seen just before she had died, which was practically Tony Stark arguing with Carol Danvers, to where at the time she believes that Tony was more concerned with being right than anything else. But during Civil War, in this trip to the Below Place, which is a trip she also doesn't remember, but when she was there and she ran into Brian Banner, oh, she remembered him. And mainly from the death of her aunt, Bruce's mother, to whom she always knew, like even as a little girl, when her father told her it was an accident, like she always knew that Brian killed her and her parents were just trying to tell her the easiest or lightest version of the story. And when she sees him, initially she just believes that she's stuck in hell with Brian Banner forever. And it's here where he lets her know, like he's been to hell before, which as we know, that's where Brian went when Banner first slipped and killed him on his mother's grave. But after the events of Chaos War, when Brian Banner was resurrected, infused with Devil Hulk, and guilt hulk but after that death brian went somewhere different and he tells jennifer that's when he came here to the below place which is at the bottom of reality underneath everything not to be mistaken with hell which is very quaint in comparison with hell having a number of hierarchies and rulers like other places but he also lets her know that they were brought here because they're special and they bear its mark. And initially Jennifer sees this as like a permanent death until Brian then explains to her his experience with Doc Samson to where when he died, he came to the below place and he tried to give Brian therapy because that's what Doc Samson does. But then not long after, a green door opened for Doc, allowing him to return back to the land of the living. And Brian tells Jennifer that the same will soon happen for her, even though he can't pass through and all he can do at this point is watch and learn. But then after this, we then go back to present day to where she then has a conversation with Thor, which takes place after Empire, after Thor the Devourer King, and also after their fleeing during the Avengers run. But it's here where they just get into the general conversation of She-Hulk missing Thor with the beard and how she preferred bearded Thor. And he let her know like he let go of the beard for a while because he felt like when he was looking in the mirror that his father was staring back at him. But essentially he tells her, worry not, the beard shall return. Just give it some time. But even in this conversation with what time means to gods and what it means to mortals, and it's here where Thor refers to She-Hulk as a mortal, and it's here where she corrects him, telling him that she's not mortal. And it's here where the conversation takes its turn, and Thor gives She-Hulk his insight on the concept of immortality. And with doing so, he gives She-Hulk the spill on Galactus and Thor's most recent encounter with him. And when he does, Thor sums it up pretty quick as far as what happened throughout the course of the Devourer King, and telling the story of Galactus how he had survived the previous multiverse, entered this one, and lived for millennia. And personally, like, I wouldn't mind if Thor were to tell the long version of the story and like just told all of Galactus' business. Like, guess what he was back in the previous multiverse? Like, just spilling all the truth. But essentially, Thor tells She-Hulk that no one has forever. And he had seen that when he killed Galactus. And even furthermore, we know what he had seen when the Black Winter showed him his end shortly after. And from the sum of Thor's experiences, he comes to the conclusion and he tells her, much like him, you will be immortal, but eventually you will die because no one truly has forever. And even in the case of Galactus, like I'm sure there's more further on down the line, even in the case with him and Franklin Richards, but according to what we've seen in the Immortal Hulk, even that comes to an end. But after that, we then get another flashback to Jennifer's more recent death that had taken place during the course of Empire, when she was betrayed by the swordsman and then used as a sleeper agent to attack Sue Storm, the Thing, and Mantis. But this time around, on her trip to the Below Place, she ran into the leader, who as we've seen from Immortal Hulk, he's been studying the green door, and he's been able to make his way in whenever he wanted without dying, which partially he achieved by studying Banner, but also that haunting curiosity of the times that he died, visited the Below Place and couldn't remember his time there as well. But while they're down there, Jennifer vaguely remembers the Below Place and like it comes back to her little by little. And the leader's like, oh, you remember? Oh, tell me everything you know. And for research purposes, of course. But when Jennifer arrives there, eventually she starts to remember that a green door will show up and that'll be her way out. Much like Bruce, like Doc Samson, and even like the leader himself. And the leader lets her know that it is exactly that cycle that has led him to his new plans, which span to the end of time. And these plans that he's able to achieve are not only due to his intellect, but also due to the fact that he's a gamma mutate, which also allows him to carry them out. And Jennifer just figures, okay, cool, well, I guess all of us hulks will be down here kicking your head around to the end of time. But essentially, the leader's like, nope, 
it's just gonna be me. But after this, we did see Jennifer come back through the course of Empire towards the conclusion. And at the time, all we'd really seen is her tell Sue she's seen a door, she doesn't remember much else, and now she's back. But what we then come to find out is even after that, though she doesn't remember her memories during the time she was in the below place, but what she does remember is the sense of fear that she had when she came back. But she doesn't know why, like she doesn't know what was said to her, who she had seen, and with her only having her memories from the time that she's alive, she really just remembers Wolverine saying don't think too much about it and Thor telling her that immortality doesn't exist but then it's here where we find out what the leader had did which had her so shook because this time when she died the leader had kicked her back out of the below place because at this point he's figured out a way to open and lock the green door and with this discovery he can determine who can come back and who can't and when he sent Jennifer back this time he just did it so she'd be out of his way and when he sent her back, he told her to remember one thing, which as we know, she didn't, but he told her, whatever you do, don't die again, which is the message that had her so shook. But real quick, before we go, I want to give a special shout out to all the Patreons. Thank you guys for all your support. And for anyone who's new here who wants more information on how to support the channel, I got a link below so we can go to patreon.com slash dopespill. But that'll do it for this one, guys. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below, and we'll do it again in the next one. Alright, later.